Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to my live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today is February 1st, 2019, and we're going to write a little bit of code today. Look at this. We got a bunch of friends already hanging out in the chat room, getting the early bird, getting getting the worm, bird, something. I, I, I don't know birds and worms, but I do know tech. Hey there, chat room. There's Robert Tables and Lannon BR. Hello, hello. Cotton Smiles is here. Good morning. Brandon Satrum's here. Hey, Brandon. Good to see you. Tony, is that Tony, Tony Pizzy? Tony Pizzy? Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Hugo and Rambling Geek. Hugo's been kind of busy. We're going to take a look at some of the work Hugo's been been working on here. Some really great progress on our projects. I'm, I'm thrilled to share with you um, some of his contributions. Um, Jurgen's here. Hello, hello. And Rambling Geek. Uh, Cotton Smiles. Hey, Carrie's here. Buongiorno. Um, coffee time for Cotton. I'm, um, I'm about halfway up the mountaintop. But we're at the tippity top or something like that. I don't know how he does it. He does things. I've got the black on Blackberry today. Uh, great stuff. Hey, Kevin Griffin's here with... Is that your new emote? Look at that. Very cool, right? And, um, what's the name of your uh, your organization over there, Kevin? Let's throw a shout out to, to, uh, to one Kev Griff. Let's also make sure we get one... Out there for uh, Brandon's here. Put one out for Brandon. And uh, Bobby Tables, Robert Tables had, is here. Let's throw a shout out to Robert. There we go. Svava! What mischief? Oh, we're going to get into all kinds of mischief today. I've got my god of... Wait, wait, hang on. Let me do this right. Let me introduce the hat correctly today. I think, I think we can do something fun with this. Let's, uh, let's do the thing, and it's over here. Here. The God of Thunder hat. Well, that's kind of fun. Um, hey, good morning, Auth Zero Bobby. Good to see you. He, he, there's, um, he's had a number of other contributions. Great contributions from folks. It, exactly. Discord has been lit up over there. Um, make sure you check out the Discord channel. I pronounce it thunder. Yeah, I do. It's very um, ACDC. It is. Um, poor bot should stop using the question mark. Yeah, don't put the question mark at the end. Or put a, uh, put a question mark and then a space. <laughs> so many people here today. That's great. That is terrific. Swift Kick is the name of Kevin's organization. There we go. Um, black on Blackberry. Love the black on Blackberry. Make sure you check out the Discord. If you want to, if you want to hang out, you want to talk to some of the folks on channel about some of the things that are going on, some of the projects that we're working on. There's been some great coordination on a few of our projects, particularly around the Stream Deck uh, over the last few days. Some really good discussion. If you're even if you're not up for contributing to one of the projects, maybe you want to learn something from some of these folks. Afternoon, sixth month here, winking face. Thanks so much there, Dev Lead. I appreciate that. Uh, really great to, to have the, the renewals here. Um, that's terrific. Um, and of course, we'll make a donation to Black Girls Code all through this first quarter, ending at the end of March. Um, all of our cheers, all of our subscriptions, we're going to donate to Black Girls Code. Um, I do have to tell you, I am I am a little concerned. I've, I've held back, I've been holding back on the donation to Girl Develop It that we were going to make at the end of 2018. There's some issues with their organization, and I they're, they're literally closing chapters left and right. So I want to make sure that we give the money to an organization that can use it. And they're having some internal strife issues. It has nothing to do with funding. But I want to make sure that we, <clears throat> that we contribute where it can be used. So that money's being held securely, safely, and we will make sure that a, a organization, if they have problems, oh my gosh. We are still doing BGC. We'll have some bits, brother. Thank you so much, uh, Auth Zero Bobby. Yes, um, my gosh, we will make a donation to Black Girls Code. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so it, that leads to, it, and I got to make sure I record those, uh, those two. There was... 
uh, Svava with, right, make sure I spell that correctly, Svava Blount with 100 and Auth0 Bobby with another 1,000. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so for every time that we do cheers, oh, Yellow White Rose, thank you so much for that. Yes, we will make a donation to Black Girls Code. Um, <clears throat> hey, Eckerd and Dave Noderer is here. Good. Great to see everybody. What's happening with the green screen? I fixed it. I got it lined up a little bit better. I think it's doing in great shape there. Nothing looking too out of line there. Um, great do group doing great work. Yes, they are. Absolutely. Let me get the music playing here, and then I want to talk about some of the other things that we're going to do today. Some of the other things for the beginning of the month. Um, I feel like playing... Let's play... This is Chartreuse. There we go. This is music to code by from Mr. Carl Franklin. It's designed, it's scientifically engineered to get you in the flow, to get you in the groove, so that whatever task it is that you might be working on... <laughs> Thank you so much, Fairywings. I appreciate the resub. Um, actually, that's a first-time sub. Oh, terrific. Thank you. Uh, no, no, that was four months in a row. There we go. Four months in a row. Um, <clears throat> and, of course, we'll make a donation to Black Girls Code. This one does have a very pumped up vibe to it. Yes, it does. I'm not looking in the right place here. There's so much going on. Um, I want to, let me finish exp uh, the song. It's designed to get you in the flow, get you in into the groove, whatever it is you might be doing, whether it's writing code, doing homework, or just chores around the house, or maybe you're like fairy wings and maybe you're you're making chain mail live on Twitch. Let's, let's get a shout out for fairy wings here. Um, make sure whatever it is you're doing, you listen to music like this that'll help get you focused. All those worries that you might have fall away. You can get uh, you can get all of the songs. There's 18 of them now. MTCB.pop.com, or of course you can get the first three free at MusicToFlowBy.com and sign up for the app for your iPhone, Android, and also there's a list of songs there you can play live in your browser. MusicToFlowBy.com. <clears throat> all right, let's get into this. So. With every cheer we that, that comes in, at the end of the month, we tally up. There's a tote board you can see at the top of the, well, not at the top of this chat room, but the chat room there in Twitch. And whoever finishes with the most bits that, that they contribute, we will we'll extend an offer for them to pair program with me. On Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, Lennon BR, who uh, led the cheering for December, is going to join us, and we're going to pair program together on Tuesday morning. I am pleased, I'm happy to announce to share the results of January. Here's the here's the tote board. I don't have a drum roll. I need a drum roll. We're gonna need to work on that. We need a drum roll. Um, I need a drum roll sound effect. That shouldn't be too hard to do, right? Let me make this image a little bit bigger because I took a screenshot. All right, there we go. Auth0 Bobby topped the list for January. So I'll reach out and we'll schedule. We'll we'll put together some ideas of what we could pair program on, and we'll schedule some time that we can. There we go. R H Sumner is with the chat uh, <laughs> drum roll. So we'll uh, I'll extend an invite to Author Zero Bobby. I'll reach out to you over Twitter, um, and uh, we'll put together we'll put together some content and we will do a pair programming stream together. Thank you so much for your contribution. Um, that, that's tremendous, and it supports Black Girls Code this quarter. Very, very cool. Thank you so much. Let's see. So, of course, I've we've started another Rainbow Beard drive now. If we can get to 7,000, you can see the, the meter here. If we get to 7,000 new fo uh, total followers before May, I'll dye the beard rainbow for Microsoft Build. Huge conference. Um... We should be hearing something about it any day now. But we will dye the beard rainbow for the entire event. Yes, even if I do get invited on stage to do to do a, a keynote demo with... Scott! I'll do the rainbow beard. All right. Will Mrs. Fritz let you keep it around longer this time? I'm going to be on the other side of the country. She didn't have a vote when I'm on the other side of the country. Know what I mean? 
Sounds fun. Thanks for supporting and raising the profile of Black Girls Code. Not a problem. I want to make sure that, that we support those folks when we can here with our with our resources, our, our time, our, our, our treasures, our talents. Whether, <clears throat> whether it's helping them out, teaching a class, <clears throat> excuse me, giving, giving some time to, to help out to volunteer with something, or, or our treasures, to, to give them a little bit of donation. We're, I'm very happy to, to help out those folks who need our help so they can grow and be something in our industry. I want to make sure I call back. We had a fantastic guest yesterday. It wasn't, we didn't do any coding, but we did do a, a, I thought it was a great interview, a great discussion with John Montgomery, uh, general manager of Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, um, the .NET programming languages. And John joined us for about an hour yesterday. There we go. You can see him there. Um, and we talked about what's it like to grow our our careers in this industry. If you want to learn a little bit more about how Microsoft does some of that, how and, and how Microsoft interviews folks to recruit and hire, check out yesterday's stream. It's available out there on YouTube. Um, there's a lot that you can learn from him, and his his blog post where he explains some of his interview process is available on Medium. Yesterday's stream was great, fantastic. Hugo liked it as well. Which Scott, don't know, don't know. Like I said, we'll see. So, um, okay, so that's Bits for Bytes for January. I've logged, um, and I, I only, we do, we also do uh, cheer graffiti. If for every cheer over 100 bits, I'll put your name and your cheer in whatever piece of code we're working on so that it kind of persists. It hangs out there and other folks are able to see. Hey, look, um, Off Zero Bobby supported the development of this. Jurgen also watched the replay. It was pretty interesting. I'm glad you liked it. Cool. Thank you. You know, we had a good time and, and John really enjoyed joining us. Um, I think we might see a little bit more of me talking with the Visual Studio team in the weeks and months ahead. I have, I do have um, a couple of folks scheduled for uh, as guests for February, or we always have guests on Thursdays here on stream. And um, I have a couple of them already lined up. Uh, I'm gonna start publishing their information over to the events tab. So, oh, it's up top. If you, if you click on that events button up top, um, it's not there yet, but you'll see all my guests, guests for February listed out there. Yellow White Rose, breakfast has triggered and it's going to be nap time. Have a good one, Yellow White Rose. Um, hey, Dander119. Awesome interview. So cool to see Microsoft grow and evolve since your time there ages ago. Yeah, Brandon's a former Blue Badge. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really enjoy how you switch up the format, doing more formal interviews, guest pair programmers, and just free form. Let's build stuff. Oh, uh, thank you, Off Zero Bobby. Yes. It, if there's other folks that want to learn how to stream, they want you want to um, grow as a streamer, I'm happy to help you out, answer questions, get you pointed at some of the tools and things that I use. Um, there's a lot for all of us to learn from each other. And if there's one thing I know, it's that I don't know everything. In fact... But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. A very particular set of skills. I've acquired over a very long career. Very long career. You can tell. Yes, so Fairy Wings and I, we've been talking about doing a Code for Beginners series of sessions, and we've just misconnected here. I think that's something that we need to talk about and get back into. Coding for newbies. And and we definitely need to do that. You do have good connections. Well, thank you, DevLead. I do. Um, and I'm I'm blessed that, they're, that they've decided to join us. Um, and they've agreed to... <clears throat> to be part of the stream. Oh my gosh, I've got phlegm here today. <coughs> Which language am I going to use in that series? Asks Physiotronic. Um, I was thinking about just starting with HTML, CSS, and a little bit of vanilla JavaScript. Just enough to get folks past building their first website. Is that, is that Xer? Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. And I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Jeff, one year, 
Oh my gosh. The Meat Popsicle is back one year, 12 months in a row. So great to see you. I think you're our first one year subscriber. And if I'm right, that's going to give you a gold mug in the chat room. The first gold mug. <coughs> um, let's see if he pops up there. Oh yeah, big hype there. Well, now why is it still blue? If that was 12 months, it should have gone blue. Hmm. Thank you, Svava, for the hype. Yeah, absolutely. 12 months. Um, and I, I'm, I'm putting together, I want to put together a little package, a little thank you for 12 month subscribers. Um, and I'm, I know February is my one month, one year, uh, since affiliate, um, and, uh, uh, since affiliate status. And I want to make sure that I get that put together and sent out. I'll have more about that in the next few weeks. Lennon just sent me a Twitter DM for final prep. Fantastic. I will follow up on that after the stream. Z Lucian asks, will you consider an ASP.NET Core MVC course? Yes, we did one last April. And I'm, I'm, I'm fixing to do one again here. I want to do it in February, but there's a number of things that are coming up. Um, and uh, uh, I think... I think you're really gonna like it if I get that to land the way I do. The last one we did was eight hours long, and I wanna push 12. I wanna do 12 hours of ASP.NET Core to get you in at the ground floor and take you all the way through building, deploying, putting into containers, getting it out on Azure. Um, I think that's gonna be a, a really good course. Um, so keep an eye, keep an ear open, Z Lucian. I'll be publishing an event as soon as I know more about when I can do that. So, <coughs> DD asks, "What's the bathroom situation for a twelve-hour stream catheter?" <laughs> catheter? No, no. Last April we had Julie Lerman, John Galloway, and others. Yes, Shane Blair was also in that group. It was a lot of fun. We we really had a good time. Um, the previous course, not on Udemy. I don't want you to go out to Udemy to watch video with with me teaching you a workshop live over Twitch like this. Go over to the to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C Sharp Fritz. C Sharp Josh, thank you for the follow. If you go over there and you and you click into my past videos and look for ASP.NET Core, or I think it's the eight-hour ASP.NET Core, it's my top-viewed video. You'll find it in there. It is a full. It is one video, eight hours long. I've taken other courses that we've done and I've broken them up into individual one-hour chunks and uh, published them as playlists. But uh, I I think I think DD, we can talk. I think there's definitely no, not a diaper sponsorship. No. But I think we can definitely do something to maybe drop in some bumpers, some things to to give a little bit of transition in between segments. It gets a little bit rough sometimes in between those as we transition out of one pair programmer into the next for the next segment. Segment Depends on depends. Oh, I, I, I see what you did there. Uh, depends on depends. I get it. Thank you for the follow, C-Sharp Josh. We appreciate seeing you and uh, look forward to, to your questions or comments in the chat room. Um, the next thing I wanted to ask you about, I want to get a little bit of a poll. I'm going to put up a poll. What do you think? Let's, let's put up a, a quick poll here. I want to make sure, I want to get your feedback. Um, I, I've, I always try to learn and spend time looking at how other folks conduct interviews, how other folks on YouTube <clears throat> do things to to improve the quality to discuss and get folks interested um, in following along whenever there's a guest on. So um, I want to put together a recurring question. Um, and let's put this right here. I have three questions that I'm considering having all of our guests from here forward answer. Um, and let me finish getting these copied in. 
Of course, I put the questions all the way over on this screen, and it's the, the poll configuration is way over here. So there are three possible questions, and I'll take, you know, I may take some other ones here. Um, there we go. Yep, add that new poll. Let's turn it on. Yep, show it to the viewers. If you mouse over the video here, somewhere over on my side of the screen, a Twitch Picks poll will pop up. And the question is, what should Jeff's recurring question be? And I've got three possible questions that I want to start to ask every one of our guests. The first one, what technical topic keeps you up at night? I think that's kind of interesting. It focuses, it, it gets us to have our... Um, have our 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 guests answer you know what things are they worried about what do they right what where can we contribute to maybe ease some of that worry the second question what was your first job in tech and the third question what was your biggest technical disappointment what was your biggest weakness i think is a, a terrible interview question Ugh, no 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 i don't want to go with that so let me know, click through and, and, and drop your votes on there and we'll figure out what we, how we can ask folks and, and learn a little bit more from them and have a, a running commentary from all of our guests going forward about the things that, uh, that we can learn from them. You know, I really like the what keeps you up at night. I think that's a, a, a interesting question that we can ask folks. But certainly, what was your biggest disappointment is another interesting one. To get from folks and it's not what was your biggest failure but what was your disappointment maybe there was a product that they didn't like maybe there was a feature that was that was released in somebody else's product that they thought you know what that's kind of lame i don't want to see that um so there we go so i covered the questions we've talked about the music what first got you into tech what were you hoping to do make or achieve that's not bad either that kind of goes along with what was your first tech job. But yeah, that's not bad. Hello there, Enzima. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Next thing I haven't, I need to go back into, we have a, we have a channel over on the Discord server called Ask Jeff Anything. And I want to go through, it's been a while since we've opened the mailbag, since we've gone in here and, and answered some questions. And, uh, I'm going to go in here and see what we can what we can learn, what we can figure out, what we can answer to, to help folks. Because if there's one thing that I do do... I drink and I know things. I do. I know things. I might not be able to answer everything, but I can at least get you pointed in the right direction. Um, all right. So I, I need like a mailbag sound effect or something or an intro chime. I don't know. Um, let's see. Lucky number seven asks, I'm looking at the Q&A maker documentation for updating knowledge base, asking a question and answer. JSON used is, and there's a big block of JSON. I assume to add a question, I only need to, that sounds very self-explanatory. I'm not going to go into that. It, it, it feels like he's already answered himself. Uh, so I'm just going to mark that with a check that uh, we've looked at it. I don't, yeah. Um, Leaksy. Uh, asks, I mentioned Stream.io in my 101 on Twitch streaming. Am I still using that or are you simply broadcasting on Twitch now and uploading to the tube of you with the Twitch video? Um, I do not use Restream.io. Um, I'm going to come back to Enzima, en Enzima's question there. That's a good one. Um, I do not use Restream.io anymore. Dave Noderer, thank you so much for that tier one sub. Tier one! Um, we're going to make a donation to Black Girls Code, and uh, that will turn off the advertisements, the pre-roll ads that Twitch puts on the channel here, and it also um, means you're going to get the .NET bot emote that you can use everywhere here on Twitch. Get lousy with that in other people's chat rooms. Let them know that you've been here and that and that you're a, you're a fan of good code. <laughs> mm. All right, so. I, uh, to finish answering Leaksy's question, I do not use Restream.io anymore. Restream is a terrific service that's available if you want to be able to broadcast to multiple endpoints. Um, 
So if you want to broadcast to not just Twitch, if you want to broadcast to Mixer as well, if you want to broadcast to to a Twitter Periscope, if you want to broadcast to um, Facebook Live, you can do all those things. And, and YouTube. And you'll see folks on the Visual Studio channel, Microsoft does this for major events. We did this for Connect. We used Restream to broadcast Connect to YouTube, to uh, Mixer, and to Twitch. That way, all of those folks who, no matter where you were, you could you could watch the video for Connect. And we did a bit of that also for .netconf. For my channel, um, I've developed a, a very good relationship with Twitch. Um, I don't, the one thing I don't like about Restream is you're supporting and splintering your audience. And we saw this problem where we had some folks that were on Mixer and we had some folks that were on Twitch and it was very hard for them to chat with each other. It, it split up the community and it wasn't easy for folks to communicate across those different endpoints, those different services. So that was, that was the problem I had with Restream. The, the final problem that I have with Restream is as an affiliate on Twitch and also as, an, as a partner on Twitch, you're not supposed to use Restream or any other service to syndicate your content live or on, on other services. So I would be in violation of uh, my affiliate agreement if I used Restream, so I do not use it anymore. Um, thanks for the question. That is, it, it's, it makes sense for larger events. It makes sense for, uh, enterprises that have partnership agreements and that are, um, trying to reach a very wide group of folks. Um, and if you don't have those types of agreements on the various platforms, Restream does make sense, but that's not me. I want to make sure that we have our our organization, our community, all gathered together here, having a good time together, chatting and uh, laughing and, and I think um, writing some good code together and doing good things. But as far as um, uh, do I, the, the follow up question is from Core Bob is, do I use the Twitch export to YouTube or do I upload separately? I do use the Twitch export to YouTube. Um, it has burned me this past weekend because um, they muted three minutes of my video because they thought I was LL Cool J. Um, I was playing, I played the music uh, going back to Philly like I normally do uh, in my pre-roll before we get started. I was playing that music. It's, uh, it's from the show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, and the, the Twitch um, DMCA copyright bot muted me before getting, um, and I don't mind muting that music, but it bled over and it muted three minutes of my intro. If for me to export that video now, it's gonna contain that mute. It's, you're not gonna be able to hear me talking. However, if I had recorded locally, it wouldn't have that mute and I could republish to YouTube, where YouTube would probably strike that, uh, that music as well. But, um, me talking would have would have survived that. So, WQ Walter is here. I'm new to Twitch. How do you search for other channels on programming that leaves out the game focused channels? Um, what you can do, WQ Walter, is you go up to the search box up top and you can search for science and technology. Most of the folks that that stream on programming, you'll find in the science and technology category. Occasionally, you'll see them in Let's Chat or maybe even in basic programming. Um, I had a phone call with some of the uh, Twitch developer folks, some of the Twitch developer relations folks, and they would like to encourage programmers, folks that are writing code on stream, to be in the science and technology category. So if you go up there and, and, and you type that in, you'll see a great list of all the other folks who are currently live streaming about science and technology. Um, there's also... Um, there's also, what is it, the, the list of awesome, the awesome list, awesome list of streamers, um, right, it was the awesome streaming frameworks, here we go, 
so those are those are awesome frameworks. Mm -mm. Um, awesome list of uh, Twitch streamers. It was something like that. What was it? Awesome developer streams. There we go. Lannan has it. Let's open that up and we'll go over to the big screen. Hey, there we go. Hello. Um, so this is a great list of all kinds of folks that are streaming, that are writing code, all and what their topics are that they typically focus on. Um, I'm right in the middle of the pack. Um, so check it out. And if you're a streamer and you're you're building up your audience and you're getting in and you're you're doing things on a regular basis here, uh, send over a pull request. Let them let them know. Um, there's also. Um, there's also, uh, where is it? The Knowledge Foundation is a group that's that's slowly building out. Oh, let me see, where are they? They changed their logo on me. There it is. The no Knowledge Fellowship. They're building out a, a group of folks that stream and teach, not just technology, but teach here on Twitch. Um, where is it? Da, 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 yeah. So I'm a member of the Knowledge Fellowship as well. You can click through and you can see about the Knowledge Fellowship Eight, below. Six months. Lennon, thank you so much for six months with the sub. Um, and uh, yeah, that puts you into a red mug now, right? Red is... No, it'll put you into a blue mug. They reset all the counts today because they're actually... so. It, Twitch is going to, you'll see an announcement or something a little bit later today. All of the sub uh, numbers are being reset so that they're not cumulative sub numbers, but they're going to be aggregate, okay? So it's not going to be six months in a row, but you'll start to see, yeah, it says six months. Uh, it says six months in a row now, but it's going to turn around and say a total of six months. And you'll see an announcement about that in the next day or two here from Twitch. In fact, we might even hear about it on Twitch Weekly today from, uh, what's his name, DJ Wheat. So, uh, yeah, aggregate numbers is what we'll start to see. So, all right. Um, so let me see. Let me go back over to Ask Jeff Anything. I think that's all we got. Um, there was a question about can I can I appeal the mute? I have appealed the mute. They haven't written back. They haven't changed anything yet. But that clears out the Ask Jeff Anything channel over there on Discord. Sign up for Discord. Join our channel. There's all kinds of folks in there. We got about 82 people hanging out. Another 225 that are offline. Chatting, talking about whatever. Um, join in. It's always fun to ask questions. And, and if you're if you're if you're bored if you want to hang out if you want to talk to folks about a project that you're working on and get some feedback from other folks that hang out here in the chat room or or even me go ahead and drop in there and and we're building that out i've got to learn how to manage discord a little better but we're doing a well, we're having a good time over there journey started says i would like to see twitch develop some capability in handling audio allow the streamer to send the audio music sound effects as a separate channel the viewer can choose to listen to the extra audio and would assist with music copyright issues. That's interesting. Um, because right now everything goes on one feed. To send as multiple channels, um, it's going to make things very interesting. I have a, an audio mixer here. I would need to break out my, my channel separately to send. So it could be a little bit more complicated to do that. Hey, NAR002, welcome. Good to see you. So um, let's get into our project. Let's get into a little bit of the discussion about what's been going on with some of some of our projects here on stream. And I want to first, you know what, I'm going to start over here. Um, Ship IT is a, another good one. I, I'm doing just fine, NAR002. Uh, NAR How are you? Um, so let's let's get in. Let's talk about this. Does OBS support exporting multiple channels? No. No, they don't. Um, this is the Stream Deck Emulator project. Now, this is a project 
that um, that we actually uh, one of our one of the folks here in chat, Carrie Payette, it started, and she was interested in um, emulating the button presses for a stream deck, so that as we build plugins, and that's kind of the project we've been focused on for the last two weeks, as we build plugins for the stream deck that allow us to create buttons that look and do all kinds of different things. Here's uh, 14 different sound effects I have. Things like... Uh, and you blow it! Thank you, Bobby. Um, or... Shame. 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 So, um, that's great. It can play music. It can control OBS. A whole bunch of different things. You can send text and start and stop music. That kind of thing from here. But if you don't have the device or you don't have this app installed, how do you test? How do you build for it? So Carrie put together um, a very simple Node.js application that was minimum viable to emulate pushing a button. What happens when I push a button and trigger that inside my plugin application? So um, it got us past that, well, I can push a button and see what it does inside my plugin. And that's great. That does a little bit for us, but we can then start looking a little bit further. Maybe we put it in a container, the, the emulator in a container. Maybe we start emulating some of those button presses and get the feedback that it sends back to the stream deck. And we can turn that in, turn that, we, and we can turn that into a little bit of um, integration testing so that during our build process, we can not just say, you know, make sure that the plugin unit test then does these things, but let's actually put down the plugin, load it into our emulator, push the button and see what it does. That's pretty cool. That's a really neat idea. So what some of the folks, some of our friends here in the chat room have been talking about some of what they've been building towards is um, let's actually put this into a container Let's build this out maybe as a command line tool, as a global tool, using Node. And then we can get that into the build pipeline for not just our plugins, but anybody who's building a plugin and wants to test it. So um, there's, there's a lot there that we can accomplish. A lot of discussion about it, too. There's four issues open here right now. And, and Hugo and Off Zero Bobby have been very active at, at working on some of the things going on inside this project. And you can see they're getting a little bit of credit up on that, um, that ticker up at the top of the screen. Um, that's, that's a list of everybody who's contributed to one of our projects here on stream. And I want to make sure that we celebrate those, those efforts and recognize exactly what it is that they're contributing um, because that's important. Right? We want to thank those folks who do contribute to our learning experience and help forward our projects so that we can learn from them as well. So um, we have four of them here. We need a DevOps pipeline to NPM. I think, actually, I think um, our friend Brady Gaster wants to work on this. So putting that, that build process in so that you can say NPM install Stream Deck emulator and you'll have it available to you. So Brady's going to start working on this and I'd like to assign him. He's not in my people list. I invited him to join the project and he's not here yet. So um, Brady, Do it! get in here, man. All right. Um, next one here is put the emulator in a container. And I've, I've tagged, uh, this is Robert Tables and he's started doing this on his own stream. Um, this is a web, it's not a web app, it's a command line application using Node.js that will do this interaction. So there's some discussion here with, with Derek around what we can do here, how we can improve this. And he's been, and Robert Tables has been working on this. That's right, an anarchist dog. Uh, Bobby Tables has been quite active working on this. Oh my. I don't want to write his name in a form field, okay? All grown up. People call him Robert now. It can be done exactly how I want it. So. The only question is, are you the man to do it? 
darn skippy. We're going to get it done and we're going to do amazing about it. Robert Tables is Mr. Containers. Yeah. All right. Um, so, uh, we'll check in with Robert. I'd, I'd love to get a little bit of a status here as to where this is going. And commented, dropped into to this so that we can figure out going forward what our next steps are. Um, drop table, David. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrific I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that uh, we're able to have other folks contribute help out and even host their own streams showing some of these things it's, it's a simple idea that I'm throwing out there and I'm happy that other folks are able to say oh yeah I know how to do that let me help out and we can learn this together um, data structures are important to learn as a beginner developer yes absolutely um, not myself. This is uh, this is Auth Zero Bobby. Wants to be able to make the emulator be able to run as a global NPM tool. And we have a pull request that's a work in progress. You see the WIP tag in front of it. Work in progress is what that stands for. If we want to push this to NPM for people to be able to use, they need a way to execute it. Um, okay. Yeah. So we could have a bin, binary executable command line interface. That's what CLI stands for, if you're not familiar. Ensure the CLI accepts a project path and executable name as parameters. Well, that kind of makes sense. You want to be able to, to specify, here's the name of my plugin that we want to test. Okay, I'm good with that. Investigate any other things needed to make NPM I, that's NPM install, so node package manager install dash G globally. So it's available everywhere on my system, Stream Deck emulator. So let's click through and look at the pull request that's been started here. And there's, there's a bit of discussion already going on and a bunch of commits here. This is great. I do stream regularly. There you go, there's my schedule. Um, lots of details going on here. Um, so end goal for this project, produce an NPM installable tool tool would not be installed into a specific project. Nobody's going to require it and use it inside their applications. Instead, we want to be able to execute the tool against any plugin project. And that makes sense. Not just something that's built with our library and, and tools that we're working on here, but be able to use this with any Stream Deck uh, plugin so that even our, even our friends at Elgato who make the Stream Deck can test with, with some of their actions and, and get some feedback there as well. The PR introduces a CLI SDE. SDE. What's SDE stand for? Help me out here. Let me know. I'm not familiar with what you're referring to. CLI, Stream Deck Emulator. Aha, okay. So in SDE, all right, a Stream Deck emulator with a single command run, which takes two parameters, path and executable. CLI will spawn synchronous child processes with environment variables set correctly to run the emulator. That makes sense. That, that sounds really easy then for me to start up and say, run the emulator, point to this plugin, get started. This works for me on OS X, but I would like someone to test it on Windows. I've got Windows. Hey, NAR002, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Steve, Steve, you're getting a little sweaty over there, fella. Take it easy, all right? Relax. There's a lot of followers here, Steve, and you've greeted almost five, more than 5,000 of them. Take it easy, buddy, all right? We might retire you sometime soon here. Maybe. Um, to, to, to test without actually installing the project from NPM, run the command from the root of the cloned repository like this. I, I always like seeing sample execution statements there. That makes sense. Um, you should be able to see the emulator startup, display its menu. You can enter any of the commands and see it execute. To quit, use Control C. Add dependencies, cleaning up, updating a readme. I like having a nice readme with the tool so folks can learn how to do it. Um, and I've added Carrie to get some comments. This is a standalone tool that won't be integrated as part of another product. So, looks like it's moving in the right direction. Fantastic. Steve just wants to be friendly to the developers, developers, developers. Yeah, I agree. Do I use Webpack? I'm not really a Node developer. Um, so, I, I'm not committed to one tool or another when it comes to JavaScript. 
Hey there, uh, is that W Madza 11? Welcome, hey guys, hello. Well, not just guys here, guys and gals, hey folks. You're right, we've got, we've got, right, so we've got a couple, uh, more than a couple, we've got a bunch of ladies hanging out in the chat room, joining us, learning and encoding with us, yes. So, um, this looks, this looks like a really great idea. I like the direction that it's moving in. Um, nice read me inside the project to build and get this moving in the right direction. Um, really happy to see this, see this growing. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Some good stuff to help get it kicked off. A new index.js with some nice coloring here so you can see exactly what it's doing. Great stuff. I'm going to hold off on merging this just yet because of the request that it's a work in progress. Um, and then giving some feedback alert icon is displayed, plugin registered. The real next question when we get through the emulator, look at that. Uh, Carrie says, thrilled with Auth0 Bobby's PRs. Yeah, this is great stuff. Th this really is. I like seeing, you know, the, and, and some of these are, are simple collaboration things. Writing a little bit of a readme, moving things into locations that make them easier for folks to access. So we do need to test on Windows. Um, I'm gonna leave this for, for other folks to be able to chime in on and, and answer and, and investigate. We will get this done, absolutely. So check it out. Um, I'm gonna throw a label here and I'm gonna ask for help wanted here. And uh, this is definitely an enhancement. I'll put those labels on it. If you're out there and you wanna help out, you wanna provide some feedback, go ahead and pull pull down this pull request. There's instructions about how to get it down here at the bottom, command line instructions, so that you can get this and try it out on your own machine. Let's let's provide some feedback on it so that Off Zero Bobby can move forward and, and learn about it. I'm, I'm gonna purposely hold back on this and give you folks out there an opportunity to try it out and, and make a call, provide some feedback appropriately here so that people can contribute. Awesome work at Otho, Bobby. Yes, very awesome work. Thanks so much, Rambling Geek, for that kind cheer. I'm going to record that one right over here so that when we get into our code, we'll start uh, recording some of these some of these cheers here today. I think this is, this is great stuff, and I want to make sure that we continue to support and encourage folks and when this is ready to merge, we'll merge it here live on stream and show the final product of how this all works. It's really, really good stuff. Make sure you check this out. Okay, the last pull request that I wanted to look at, uh, so that's the first one here. There's two others here. Add a help message for missing ENV file. Hey, Crows, good to see you. Um, as a user, this is from Hugo, I expect to find out what I did wrong or is missing when trying to start the product. This PR adds a message to display if the .env file is missing before exiting. Now, the .env file, this is this uses the .env uh, or .env library in JavaScript, in Node, so that you can specify, here's default settings for the project, or you can override them using environment variables. So this is just a very simple, and eh, let's, put a message here if it's not loaded. And we can add, I'm sure we can add some other uh, error checks here in the future. If it's, if it's missing some settings maybe, or it's misconfigured, we can add additional checks in there. But this in the configuration, this makes perfect sense and is a real good, um, it's a good practice, right? To, to check and verify that the things you depend on for your application to run are configured properly, have the appropriately formatted contents. So um, that looks really good. I'm gonna merge this. And, all right, thanks for the help, Hugo. There we go. Really appreciate uh, this type of um, gatekeeper and validation. Uh, pull request because uh, quite frankly I'm not going to think of all the scenarios 
all the issues that we need to address and protect our code from. And and when folks, folks like you out there, when you see something that makes sense, maybe there's a unit test we need to build, or you see there's a validation that, that we're missing, and you can put together a little pull request that adds that feature in, or even just opening an issue, I wanna make sure that we recognize and thank you and get that into the mix and we'll put you up on the, the big list up there at the top of the screen in that ticker and we'll celebrate just like we did Hugo's contribution here. Option two was to put a link, check the readme before running. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like what you did there. Um, oh yeah, I've got that sound effect too. Should we go over there? Right? Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Hey, think with fly. Think. Read the read me, all right? Um, so I want to make sure that, that this is easy for anybody to contribute to. And honestly, we need, yes, do you know what RTFM means? Um, and I, I do recognize that, that we are right now very English oriented. And, and at some point we probably, not probably, we will want to localize. We will want to get some translations into the mix here. And um, as much as I may want to automate that. The robot just can't translate as well as a real person. So. I want to make sure that we can bring in and, and avoid having a robot do that and, and extend an opportunity for, for somebody to put in translations, whether it's Portuguese, Spanish, German, French, wherever we feel are appropriate to add translations for some of these things, I want to make sure the opportunity is there for folks to contribute. So there is language for C Sharp with SQL. Um, oh, finish, there's another one we could put in there as well, yes. I want to make sure we include that. Um, da -da -da, coders, 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 I use C Sharp more. Well, uh, NAR002, my name is C Sharp Fritz. It's kind of a thing. Um, C Sharp is a great language, Auth0 Bobby says. It's not the only language a developer usually works with. Completely agreed. I end up working with um, upwards to 10 different languages. Um, on a daily basis, use five to six different languages. Yes. Uh, C Sharp, SQL, so you work with the database. HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, shell scripting language. TypeScript. Um, SAS, less, all kinds of stuff. So, um, help your users fall into the pit of success and they will love you. Yes. Um, don't like just regarding opening issues. Yeah, don't, it, I, I can agree with that. Don't just open an issue. Give us a little bit of, of information in describing your issues. And actually, um, we now have some, um, issue reporting templates that'll pop up for you as well. Just entering doesn't work, doesn't help the community. No. Screenshots help. Um, animated GIFs really help. So, success by, de by default. <laughs> success by default. That was easy for me to say. Um, success can be a failure with how to move past the failure. Yes. Funny story, I was traveling a lot and at the airport, Crows 4K started cheating with one cool developer and saw a cool sticker RTFM. Hang on, cheating? What did you cheat at? And I and I was, what is that sticker? I never saw it and he joked with me five minutes. How can you call yourself a developer if you don't know what RTFM means? Eventually told me and you dropped dead laughing. Hmm. I'd consider them languages, but not programming languages. Markup language in the HTML name. I can agree with that, Smab. Um, but to to the non-tech folk, to the the non-technical folks out there, you may call them muggles. Sometimes you'll hear me refer to them as muggles. They're when 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 those folks look at HTML or they look at CSS, that's code. To to us, yes, it's markup. Yes, it's a it's a style sheet. It's not code, but but it it really is. You're writing instructions to format a document to to make something appear the way it should be, and and to the non technical folks who aren't familiar with how those things operate, it is magic to them. It's 
it, you've made a difference. You've changed their behavior and given them something that makes it easier for them to be productive, hopefully, or have fun using technology. Uh, developing is a lot more than learning languages. Just writing a book is a lot more than learning English or German. Yeah, that's true, Tractor Farm. Yeah. If you recall, CSS3 is Turing complete. Okay. If you're writing code against pre-compiled libraries, it's programming. That's where I... We can draw lines around what's programming or isn't as, as technical folks. The fact of the matter is, outside of our industry, if you write anything that makes a computer or makes a, a piece of technical hardware, I'll, I'll even go as far as to qualify, um, if you make that do something, that's programming. Outside of our industry, right, that is programming. So if you write a little IFTTT script that sends sends a notification when something happens, that's programming. To non-technical folks. To us, it's scripting. Ah, scripting. And scripting is different. No, scripting's programming. It's all development. You're using tools to build tech and software. Yeah. So, um, and, and I, I like to joke with our friend Fierce Kittens, um... C++ is elite programming, and JavaScript, she likes to think, is not so much. She's not a fan of JavaScript. But she's got the chops. She's helped program several different um, video games, many different languages. She really knows her stuff. Even Excel scripts are programming. They are. Oh, my gosh. Excel scripts absolutely are. Do you know how many organizations, how many companies are run off of just Excel sheets? There's a lot. So what makes you a real developer? Somebody pays for something that you wrote. If somebody pays for something that you wrote, you're a real developer. If you wrote, if you wrote something that makes so that, that makes something happen on a computer or a piece of technical hardware, and somebody pays you for that, that's when I consider you a real developer. If you wrote something for yourself, you're you're kind of a hobbyist. Yeah, you're a developer, you're an engineer, you're building some things. But at the point that somebody says, I'd pay for that. I'd hire you to build that. That's when I think, at, the, at that point that you get your first paying gig, you're a developer. Professional developer for money. Yep. Yep. Excel is the OG functional programming language. Karen from finance is the OG programmer. Absolutely. Yeah. Skippy in accounting, I like to I like to joke. Absolutely. Hugo also has a pull request here for us to add a quit option to the emulator. Have a more friendly, intuitive way of shutting down the emulator. Well that kind of makes sense. Th this this feels like and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce this off of uh, our, our friend Carrie there and uh, not myself, off zero Bobby. This this feels like a no duh, right? Like why didn't you and here it is. So there's a little bit of, of teardown code, may have gone a little overboard, made excessive and or incorrect calls. So um, so Hugo's asking for a little bit of um, a little bit of feedback, a little bit of code review here. So let's let's take a look at the code that Hugo provided. Um, so to quit, press Q. Okay, that makes sense in the menu. Um, these are the various events you can trigger from the emulator, but then at the end to quit press Q. Okay, so in our case statement for commands, case Q, so the forked uh, process, we're gonna disconnect, we're gonna remove all listeners, and then we're gonna kill that forked process. That makes sense to me. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I This looks good to me. I'm going to merge this and get this into the mix. Um, thank you for adding, and it's a simple usability, this usability feature to make it easier for our developers, for our um, Stream Deck programmers to be able to uh, use the emulator. All right, that's great stuff. Dave says, I'm also a professional nerd as I introduce myself to non-technical groups. Yeah, yeah. 
non-technical folks have an interesting perspective on on us as technical folks. Um, when teaching preschool kids programming, I start with commands on paper, like arrow left, up, down, right, which a friend can then execute, fill boxes to end up at a goal. Yeah, there's um, the hour of code that you may have seen. Um, there's a Minecraft bit of that. Hour of code, Minecraft, where it, it does exactly that type of thing, right? Let's get um, let's get Alex or Steve here to navigate around a maze and and drop some wood off somewhere or push a stone or you know whatever. And you've got some you got some famous people like Steph Curry from the Golden State Warriors basketball team jumping in here. Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, right? Um, Chris Bosh, President Obama. You know these are folks that you know what help encourage that thing. And I think code.org and the folks at the Hour of Code organization are doing a terrific job making that accessible to young folks. And we want to do that. We want to grow that next generation of programmers. Because let's, I mean, every 10 years, we're going to see huge changes, even every five years, huge changes in our industry. 10 years ago, there wasn't an iPhone. And now everybody's got a mobile device and everybody wants to program for it. Things grow and change. So let's make sure that those folks that are coming in after us get that opportunity to stand up on us, stand up on our shoulders, and and advance. So um, there's a question here. So put the emulator in a container, make the emulator able to run as a global NPM CLI tool. Um, and that looks like it's pretty well along here. Oh, Hugo's working on this. Fantastic. Um, update set branching model, asks Hugo. Before we get in too deep to the development effort, do we want to set up a branching model, such as the one in the toolkit, where we have a development branch and then a master branch. And master is really our production. This is what we've released. Um, I started Git flow initialized on my computer when I noticed the lack of a dev branch. Yes, let's create a dev branch. We'll figure it out. Not a problem. Not a problem. So I'm going to create a branch here called dev. I'll click that. And now we have a dev branch in this repository. But I want the dev branch to be the primary branch where folks are working. So I'm going to go over here to branch and change this so that the dev branch is the primary, the default branch when you navigate to the project. And then I'm going to add a branch protection rule that says for master, we require... Enforce all configured restrictions for it. Uh, restrict who can push to matching branches. And we want to make sure that only administrators can push. Um, there we go. Yep, that's my password. All right. So now, in this repository, you're going to be required to work with the dev branch going forward. And uh, I think that's pretty good. We'll end up getting these things working together. Uh, five years ago, serverless functions wasn't even a thing, and now it's a huge craze. Absolutely. Um, something cool is cooking an F-sharp from Lena Droid. Yes. I'm. Oh, yeah. All right. So that's a little bit around the emulator. Let's go over to the toolkit. Now, the toolkit... This is a C-sharp based library. It's a .NET library that we can use to build plugins. And uh, we have one pull request out here. Oh, there's there's two now. Um, the first one that we have here is from Stelzy, and it's about using an NTFS junction to connect where you build your plugin at to the exact folder location on disk that the Stream Deck looks for to um, make it easy to build and deploy without having to copy things around. Um, I, I have a little bit of trepidation around changing the layout of somebody's drive in a build script. So I'm going to move this into a separate script. And we've provided that feedback to Stelzy here. Man, I tell you, how do you type those circles? I know. It's an interesting password. So we'll see how that develops with Stelzy here in, over the next uh, few days. Hugo has, an, has a PR for us. Fix issues with project and deployment script. Sample project was referencing files in the wrong path. Uh-oh. 
or referenced file was in the wrong path, deployment script was working against the wrong project file name. Ooh, ooh, what did we do here? So it was going into Stream Deck plugin from the sample plugin location. Well, that's not the right location. Yeah, it needs to, if, so from the sample plugin, this is our canonical sample that we're building. We need to make sure that we're pointing to the same folder. So that's right. This looks like it might have been a, a copy paste from the template that wasn't copied in correctly. So that looks better. And now it's recursing through and bringing all the folders in. Yeah, manifest should be up a level. That's right. And the sample plugin. Uh, view file. So the sample plugin has that as part of it. Yeah, hey, it's a thing. Don't merge yet. There's a miss. Uh oh. There's a miss. There's a push location, but no pop location. Ah, okay. So push location takes the current folder location where you are on disk and puts it into a stack. It puts it in memory so that um, you can go back to where you were. So looks like this is still a work in progress that Hugo's wrenching on here. That's fine. Let him uh, continue taking a look at that. Now, the, the next piece that I wanted to get into, and I mentioned briefly, it'd be great if we had some sort of an integration test so that when you do get the template, we verify that the template builds properly. That's a problem if it doesn't build properly. Right? We need to be able to, to build and use... I want to be able to build and use the template immediately when it's published. So how do we put together some sort of a validation script for that? So these .NET templates that we have that you can use for .NET Core, they work great on the with the .NET Core command line. Um, you can build with syntax. It's very similar to what you see here in our Stream Deck Toolkit templates, Stream Deck Plugin Template C# -sharp folder. There's a new spec document here that defines the the packaging for this. Um, and then we have a global JSON file that kind of forces the version of the SDK to build this. Inside the content folder are all the things that you need and that we're going to put down on disk as part of the template. There's a template config folder here that has a template JSON that has a little bit of the configuration about the different parameters and things that we're going to pass into the template. I'll leave it up to you to spend time taking a look at and learning more about the format of this and how you can build this out. Anyone here familiar with Angular? Need help about Matt Select? Asks C Sharp TV. Um, you know who's really good with uh, Angular? My friend Debug Mode on Twitter. Uh, that's Dahana J Kumar. So make sure you check him out on, on Twitter. He can definitely help you with, with a question out there. It's getting a little bit late though in his time zone. Um, so this is the, the template. We can build this and we should be able to execute against it and make sure that it actually does what it should do. Oh yeah, Tractor Farm. Angular is on version 7 and there's, there's talk about version 8 coming soon. Coming soon to a theater near you. Rated R. Wow. Yeah. All right. Um, so... I want to get in and I want to start talking about building a building this template and testing it. And by testing it, I want to say .NET new Stream Deck plugin and try and build it and make sure that it builds. You gave up on the whole JavaScript framework world. <laughs> what was his name again? That is debug mode. Excuse me. Um, let's put that in there. Twitter.com debug mode. And that'll take you to, right? Where was it? I was just talking. Debug underscore mode. Ooh, wrong one. That one. There you go. Dahana J. Kumar. There you go. He's actually just about to publish a book on Angular. And he's, host, he's the host and coordinator for NG India, 
a conference dedicated to Angular um, in India for, for folks that are on that part of the world. So um, I want to talk about, about building and testing this. So let me start my, my command prompt. Hey, I've got a hotkey here for PowerShell. There it goes. All right. So let me go into my project folder which I believe is still called Stream Deck first. Um, so I have a folder that I created here called test plugin and test template. I put a command file here and a shell. Let me show you what that command file looks like. And it's on the wrong screen. Now this feels a little inadequate. It's not quite where I want it to be. I think there's it's missing some things. First command dot net new dash I install this template from this location. And so templates stream deck plugin template C sharp. So templates stream deck plugin C sharp. That's where it is. That's the correct location. Good. And then I want to say dot net new stream deck plugin. That's the name of the plugin that is made available in our list of templates. Dash O, I'll put it into this folder. I'm going to call it test plugin. Dash PN, this is a switch that's part of our template. What's the plugin name? We're going to call this integration test plugin because it's a test. I don't care what the name of it is. And dash UU, this is our universally unique identifier for that plugin. I don't need to specify something here, but I want to make sure that it works so, and I have a reproducible location. So I'm going to call it test.plugin.integrationTest. Change directory in into that test plugin folder and then try building. Now, um, that feels a little short-sighted. Rotozip, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you. Appreciate you joining us. And did I miss did I miss Joey there? Joey Danger Zone? Thank you for the follow as well. I appreciate you both joining us. Look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, and and hearing about the danger zone. The danger zone? What? Wait, Master. It might be dangerous. It might be. Um let's see, uh a type is that type ooh that's hard for me to pronounce types um, uh, full pro git book is available now online terrific that's neat thanks for sharing um, so I have th this dot net new I don't think is going to do all the things that I need and here's why I don't think it is during the build process we're going to build a new version of our .NET standard library that's here in my source folder, Stream Deck Lib. And I want to use for the template, the new version of the plugin that I built. So I think we, we need to enhance this script so that it, um, so that it properly uses the new version of the plugin that's built. What do you think chat room? Does that make sense? Um, and I want to make sure that you all, that I also call out. It's been a while since I, I announced and pointed this out. There's a there's a poll running right now. If you mouse over the window here on Twitch, um, there's a poll out there. I'm looking at at establishing a recurring question, something I'm going to ask all of our guests going forward. And I put three possible questions out there: What technical topic keeps you up at night? What do you worry about? That type of thing. What was your first job in tech? And what was your biggest technical disappointment? Let me know what you think, and um, we'll probably use the top one. I think we'll use the top one as our our um, as our recurring question going forward. You do need to be watching in a browser. The Twitch desktop app will not show it. One horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? Oh, Robert Tables. Shame. 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 Yeah. Shame on you, Robert Tables, I tell you. Trying to pull a fast one on us. Uh, Java type erasure keeps me up at night. <laughs> well, th thank you for sharing. All right. Let's, um, so let's take a look at this. If 
if I have that plugin sitting on disk, I need to have that location that the plugin is written into as part of my NuGet um, sources so that I install from there instead of from the public repository. 100 ducks and horses in a Docker container. Now cut that out. I, I need more insults here. Hyper, Hyper Lolly. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, all right. So let's go back over here to PowerShell. Let's take a look at our .NET commands. Because I thought there was one to help us manage our NuGet, um, our NuGet sources, where we look for packages. So there's NuGet to provide additional commands. And that might be what we need. Let's go poke under there and see if that's what we're looking for. I don't want store. Hmm. Yeah. Let's try .NET NuGet help. Let's see what's here. I for so local, delete locals and push. Well, that's not going to work. Um, oh, thank you, Hyperioli. Oh my gosh, that is very kind. But I, I've got to, I've got to admit, I've got to confess. People know me. They do, and they just, they just stop by, and um, they're very encouraging. You can do it. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for that, Hyperioli. Um, and um, I like, I like to. Wait, wait, let me, let me explain something to you. Um, yeah, I like to explain stuff. It's our gathering place and a dose of positivity. A dose of positivity for you. But I got all these ins insulting sound effects for myself sitting here, and I'm happy to, to just let fly. Right? What'd you do? I pushed the, the button. That's what I did. I, I pushed the button, and stuff happens. So, thanks so much. Um, they know you, and yet they keep coming. I know. I know. Can you believe it? Um, I thought there was a way to manage the list of dot of of nuget sources um, hmm. right like on the fly dot net is it nuget well that's a nuget command right if i say nuget sources it'll show me those but you need to have nuget installed so i might need to add that into the mix right if i say nuget sources that's better. And uh, new get sources. That not help -o. Oh, you're not even going to show me that? There we go. Source, username, password, format, help, verbosity, config file. Use only the settings from this file. If not specified, the hierarchy of configuration files from the current directory will be used. To learn more about NuGet configuration, go to... Yeah. I, I want to... Oh, I can do an add. All right, so if I say NuGet sources... Sources add. Um, and name source user password, store password in clear text, blah, 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 blah. So we might be able to create a NuGet. I don't have a NuGet config file in this folder. Um, is that is that is that doing up? I want to make sure I'm pronouncing your your uh, your handle there correctly. Is it doing up or down up? Let me know. I'll, I'll I want to make sure we address you properly. Physitronic, I'm searching for a way to set up an ASP.NET project where, like where I put HTML, JavaScript, where, and for what I use C Sharp. Um, down up, but whatever. Okay. Uh, like I said, I want to make sure that you like doing up. Fantastic. We'll go with that. So, um, we, I suppose we could put a NuGet config file and then change it on the fly before... Um, before we test or maybe we put it in a test folder there's an idea what if we put what if we put a, a specific NuGet config folder in a test folder 
and we we give it instructions to go f so that it only knows so it knows how to find our project first and then the public repository um, but physiotronic it, well I'm waiting for feedback from the chat room on that on that idea um, physiotronic um, there's a number of great resources out there. Are you referring to ASP.NET or ASP.NET Core? ASP.NET Core, it's very prescriptive on where you can do that, on, on where you can place those things. And you're gonna place things into a www root folder. Older versions of ASP.NET, it's, it's the Wild West. You can put it wherever you'd like. Isn't there a source property to the command to install when testing installing? Um, gosh, that's a... Dot .net, well, it's a dot .net add, isn't it? Project fail, file to operate on if a file is not specified. Oh, well, there, there's package package name. Add a new get package reference to the product project. So if we do dot .net add package framework source, source, the new get package source to use during the restore. The directory to restore packages to... Let me come back to the comment there. Um, source. The NuGet package source to use during the restore. So we might be able to just say NuGet package. Right? We might be able to say .NET add. And then tell it the source. But that's... But that's going to... that adds a package to the project. We've already got the packages added. We need to restore. Uh, Physitronic asks, I don't know any of those two. Which one do we recommend first? If I learn core, can I go back, go work with the normal version? Yes. Um, you can. I would suggest learning core because that's where a lot of the development is going these days and you buy the Microsoft Teams and you'll, you'll see significant performance improvements over the previous version. It'll be a lot easier to get documentation going forward. The other documentation is there, and it, it, it's not going away anytime soon, but the investment and, and the improvements are coming on core. Don't most NuGet commands have a source parameter? Yeah. Can I .NET restore? And I can specify the source to use for the restore. So I could force a .NET restore and say restore from over there. That might work. Right? But that might work. Oh, you're welcome, Physitronic. Glad to help out. Make it so. Go forth and, and learn the, dot, the ASP .NET cores. Um, <laughs> Tractor Form says we're looking at moving to Blazor at work. Seems like a good system. It, it's, it's very cool. Blazor is a .NET um, framework and, and tools that will allow you to um, write ASP.NET code, ASP.NET Core code, that compiles and runs natively using WebAssembly in the browser. It's not fully and officially supported by Microsoft yet. It's been an experiment up to this point. Um, and we're looking, we're looking to have some news and, and possibly some commitments at a Microsoft event near you. Coming soon. Wowie, whoa, whoa. Hello. Stop the press. Inconceivable. Crows 4K, thank you so much for that kind set of five, five tier one subs to the community. That is terrific. Thank you so, so much. Brandon's getting a, a sub. Jarek 1011, HHK, Master Dome TV, and Ty, uh, Tybisi. Ty, I hope I pronounced that right. Congratulations. You've all gotten subs thanks to Crows 4K, and we're going to make donations to Black Girls Code for those for those five donations. Thank, five subs. Thank you so much. Go forth now, everybody. Use those .NET body motes. Enjoy them. Yeah, one of us, right? You're now one of us, one of the subs. You can go out and, and share the .NET bot love everywhere on this. Server-side Blazor is included in the core three releases, Tractor Farm. Um, 
so that, that's something they call razor components. And it allows you to reference various bits of user interface in the same way that you would like a directive um, in, uh, in React or Angular. Um, it's a very, very cool technology to make it easier to build and deploy components, but those same components will work client-side with Blazor. They work on in both environments. All right. Um, so maybe when we do the dot, maybe I can force a .NET restore during this build process to test the template and specify that source. What do you think? A small gift to keep the train moving. Thank you very much, uh, Crows 4K. Um, that that is terrific. I love it when a plan comes together. Yes, absolutely. We're it, it's a terrific plan, and it's coming together quite nicely. Um. All right. Let me make sure. Good. 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 My poll here is a little bit lower on the screen. That's better. Okay. Now I can see the poll, and I can see chat at the same time on my dashboard. So let's try, here's what I want to do. Um, if you look at my little script that we're putting together, .NET new, .NET new Stream Deck plugin, and we should also, I'm gonna need to be able to uninstall this as well. .NET new get locals. How about listing? So l let me show this page. This is not bad. .NET new get locals, this shows the cache locations of NuGet resources on disk. So um, you can you can list out. Here's all the places that that NuGet has stashed away um, packages. Uh, .NET NuGet locals. And now you can ask where, which ones you want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So let me move that up so you can see it. So the HTTP cache is in this location. Global packages are stored here. Temporary packages are placed over here and the plugins cache is over here. Now that's not, that's interesting, that's not bad. But all that does is list these folder locations. It doesn't actually tell me restore from this source location. Um, I can clear out that those repositories, but it doesn't actually do anything with it. President, not sure. Just heard about Microsoft Learn. Yes, Microsoft Learn is a uh, it's a service that will um, gamify and teach you how to use Azure. Um, some pretty neat stuff that'll actually spin up Azure resources and allow you to work directly with them inside of their tutorial interface. So it's a little bit of documentation and a little bit of um, a little bit of a game and you get badges and things for for succeeding at deploying things carrie i see your your whisper here um terrific i'll make sure i come back to that um so let me let me take a look let's look at the script again i need to uninstall that package uh that template oh no just to make sure that i've got a fresh template not why you and I'm going to put a comment at the beginning of that so it doesn't accidentally execute. So I don't like how the thing moves like that. There's my Stream Deck plugin. It didn't uninstall. Why not? Could not find something to uninstall called templates, blah, 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 blah. What do you mean you couldn't? It's right there. It's right there. How to set up Stream Deck emulator to Azure. I don't think you want to set it up on Azure. Um, let me go back to the instructions over here. Right? There's instructions here. Here's how to, yeah, .NET new dash U, Stream Deck plugin template. Could not find it. It's right there. Uh, it says it'll be learning for my, for learning Microsoft Tech. Xamarin University is essentially joining that. Um, it's going to join that. 
it's not there yet. Right now, though, it's all, um, what's it called? It's all uh, uh, Azure. Uh, what do we have there? Yes, Carrie wrote a module on Microsoft Learn. Absolutely. Um, we had to specify the entire thing. Well, you know what? I've got a forward slash in there. I wonder if it's grouchy because it's a forward slash and not a backslash. No. Okay. Nope. Why won't it find it? Templates, Stream Deck, Plugin Template, C Sharp. So how do I uninstall that? Hmm. .NET new help. Uninstalls a source or template pack. That's all it says. Oh, look at this. Look, 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 look. NuGet source. Specify a NuGet source to use during install. Aha! Hmm. No, that's not what I'm thinking of. Um, filters templates based on available types. Let me try. Can I just say uninstall on that? .NET new dash u this. No. How about this? .NET new dash u that. No, it really doesn't like it. Can I put quotes around it? Hey, nope. Listen. What do we got over there? I'm, you're getting my attention. What do you got, Hugo? Change to a different directory. It looks like PWD, which is clever, but distracting. Go up one. Um, let me see, what do we got here? So if I do try one of those, now list packages. All right, .NET new help. Uh, if I just do .NET new, it'll show the packages. Still sees it there. Um, if I do that, could not find it. If I specify, ugh. if I try to specify the entire shoot match here, if I go all the way down the entire could not find it. SQL Mr. Magoo is great with Blazor. Yes, he is. He's terrific with it. That is not the whole path. That's, what do you mean that's not the whole? Oh, you're right. It's not. Ooh, good catch. It's CDEV Stream Deck first on my machine. VB Lane. Thank you so much for that. Oh, no. Uh, Crow's... Uh, just gifted a tier one sub. Thank you so much, Crows, for another gift sub. Very cool. Yes, come be one of us. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Um, do you get a prize? Uh, did it uninstall? <gasps> it did. No, you don't get a prize. But um, you know what you do get? Here's what Here's what I'll make sure you get. You're going to get some some Fritz coins. There you go. Um, always be sure to add in an IOT angle. Yeah. Use the .NET bot. I can help with that. Get ready to clip it. Here we go. I'll do a voice change on this. Maybe I'll even go full screen. Let's go a little bit fuller screen. Let's go over here. How's that sound? And then we'll do this. And we'll switch over to the Darth Vader voice. Let's see. I can I can mute that. Yeah, there we go. Use the .NET bot. Use it. Use the force. The .NET bot is strong with this one. Huh? What do you think? No? Fine. Be that way. I see what you're doing there. What's the Windows equivalent of PWD? Um, oh, we gotta add blockchain. Ooh, doing up. You're right. We need some blockchain in here. And then we'll do... No. No blockchain. 
right? Because blockchain, oh my gosh, blockchain. Blockchain is a whole. You'll never find your way out of. 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 Anyways, um, from a bat file, bat file do it. Percent CD. Oh really? Oh really? Care to make that interesting? Uh, let's go back in Stream Deck first. Let me see here. Notepad. Um, test Hugo CMD. Yes, create that file. It's over here. Echo percent CD percent. No. Uh oh. Seed. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Hey, doing up. Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Let me head back over to the full. There we go. So you can see a little bit better. So that worked. Okay. All right. Now, uh, let's see what you're doing here. Let me get rid of that. So let me go back over to this. So I don't need to uninstall when I'm running this script on my continuous integration server, but I do need to .net new .net new dash i, and then I need to uh, to install it .net new on the Stream Deck plugin, and then we're gonna need to .net restore. Right now, where am I restoring from? Um, <laughs> where am I restoring from, right? Because we saw, right, we can specify the source, so dash S. So if it's, if the standard library is packed and available, it's going to be on disk somewhere nearby, right? It'll be like in the bin folder. So, right? Um, let me go over here. Let's go to our Azure pipeline. There's Stream Deck tools. So this is available. The, the Fritz and Friends organization on devazure.com is available for anybody to browse. Let me share that link in the chat room. If you want to browse out to it, you can take a look around and see what I've got configured and then mock me mercilessly. Um, hopefully give me some feedback to make it better. Um, watch the builds and make sure that they go out properly. And then... I don't know what else. Do the thing. Um, all right. Uh, Kevin, is that Kevin Gubert? Thank you so so much for the follow. No and then. Um, no more and then. But Kevin, I look forward to, to having you join us in the chat room and then hearing your feedback about what we're working on here. Maybe even correct me a little bit. Um, okay, so if I look at how this builds, how this builds the project, right? It ends with a NuGet pack. Here it is right here, NuGet pack. So it it goes into the CS proj file, right? The, the project file for our, our library. And it's going to package and put it in the build artifact staging directory. Where's that? Hmm. Um, I don't know where that's going to be. Right, because if I look at the history here, no, that's the history of the changes. I want to look at the run history of this. Yeah, yeah, show me the build, this one. Right, so when it packs, ugh. one thing I love is reading log files. All right, here we go. Um, done building the project, and there's the entire folder location. Target pack in file. Dot 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 dot. Okay, I don't care. Where did it write it to? Um. 
I can find this. There it is. All right. So I'm in this location. That's where it's going to output it to. So I do need that parameter, that work location passed into me, where it's going to write that to. Hmm. Okay, we can, right, we pass that in as an argument, and those appear to our script files as uh, like percent one or something like that, right? Here's the thing. This builds on a Unix, on a Linux agent. It's Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Got it. Okay, set it right. Throw me a freaking bone here. No, no, no bone needed. I got it right. Um, so .NET build. So it... it I'm doing this work over here, and I feel like I'm I'm being an idiot because I should be doing this in a more in a more Linux-friendly script file. Now I started one. I I, I cheated and started one. Um, here, you can see it here. Test template sh. Test template sh. And um, all right, so new i right dot net new stream deck plugin blah 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 blah. So when I'm in when I'm in the Linux world, and I need to pass in that f I need to grab that first argument that's going to be the work direct directory that's going to be that work directory location. I've got my Steve Carell goofy blah 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 sitting here. Next time I mess up. Next time I trip over my own tongue, as it were. Um, so let's go... I, I need to grab the identity of that folder. I want to pass it in as a build argument. Um, right, so so Linux script files uh, capturing arguments. Right, I want to capture an argument that's passed in. How to pass arguments to bash script. Yes. And then... Oh, it's just dollar one. Okay. Abraham GH, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us, and I look forward to seeing you in the in the chat room. Code Bagoda, hello. Mornings. Oh, they're always mornings. Um. <laughs> so what's being passed in, right? I can just grab with a dollar one. Arguments are accessed using the variables dollar one, dollar two, or dollar one refers to the first argument. So there you go, I've only got one argument to pass in. So if that's my working folder that I published to, then I want to do .NET restore. And then I want to do .NET restore dash S, because I'm going to pass in the source. And the source I want to pass in is going to be dollar $1 so that it restores from the location that I put the package down on. Change directory into that test plugin folder. And I shouldn't have to remove that folder. I, I think that's too much. And then just run .NET build, and it should build. If it builds properly, I'll have a non-zero message coming out of it. What do we think, chat room? Is there anything I'm missing to just do a simple add the, add the new template? Create a new in instance of it, restore, and then restore and get from get the new .NET standard package and build. Is that does that look right? Can you help me out? Can I get a pair of eyes giving me a, a thumbs up here? Is that supposed to be a bash script? Yes. So do I need to put the user bin bash up at the top? Yeah, I need to put the shebang up there. Will it re-restore if it got it from NuGet? Well, it won't. If you set E, it'll exit out on error. Ah, okay. Set a dash E where? On the build? Not dot in error. Not on the dash E. Not on the build. Um, 
da, 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 da. set dash e. Oh, okay, okay. Well, let me get the let me get the shebang in here. User bin bash. Uh, user bin env bash would be a good opportunity to use Windows subsystem for Linux. Do I do I have that installed? Uh, I just have git bash. Uh, da, da, da. Um, if I search for on the store, it's going to be under. Um, oh my gosh. Ubuntu, that's it. Oh no, I might actually have it here. The Windows subsystem where Linux optional component is not enabled, rats. Um, no, it is, um, it's in my settings. I'll have to set up another time. Um, add Windows feature, blah, 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 yeah. User, user bin, oh boy, and bash, okay. I'll take your word on that, Gumshoe. And then, oh my gosh. All right, set dash E, and then I've got a set O error exit, set O pipe fail. All right, now what do these ones each do? Set O error exit to, to otherwise known as the set E. All right, so those both do the same thing. To make your script exit when a command fails, then add pipe true to commands that you allow to fail. Use set dash O no unset to exit when your script tries to use undeclared variables. Set dash O X trace to trace what gets executed. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you very much, Code Pagoda. That's a, that's a uh, good help for me there. Thank you very much. Points to you. I'm not sure what you can do with points, but points to you. Um, okay, so .NET new, I want to make sure that runs, .NET new Stream Deck plugin. The second restore should come from the local folder. Basically saying, env, tell me where your bash at and use it. Aha! That makes sense, okay. So I, I think we can try this. I think we can. I think we can, I think we can. Yeah, Gumshoe gave us a ni nice link. And then Bobby summarized. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so let me get status here. So I don't want to add test plugin. We don't need the test Hugo. No offense. Don't need that file. But I do need test template sh. So let me get add test template sh. Let me commit that file. Um, adding script to test the plugin template. Yeah, it's gonna prompt me for my password so I can sign that, cool. Let me push that to origin. Uh, there we go. All right, let me go back over to here, Stream Deck Toolkit. Uh, there we go. Compare and pull request over to dev. Yes. Of course it's able to merge. Um, yeah, look at this. Merge, 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 merge. Merge. And actually there's, so there's my test template file. I added this idea of a stream deck proxy so that we could test things. And I added a bunch of other, well, there's the proxy. So we could write some some tests and there's a new test, unit test to add to the mix. So yeah, let's put that in the mix. Do the thing. Let's go. Um, uh, adding more test capabilities. And squash and merge. Yes, I want it in there. Do it. Thank you. So now it should be building, but I'm going to modify the build process um, over here. Come on now. Okay. 
Um, let me go up to this. We should see. Yep. Yeah, there it is. It's running the builds. Now, I want to edit the process, though. We should start to see additional tests up here in this. But after .NET build and after .NET test, um, and actually after the pack template, but before the publish, right in between these two is when I want to run that script, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure everything's packed up, run the script to do that integration test. Everything's been packed up. It's available. Well, let me know if it works. And actually, it's, I think it's before we pack the template is when we want to do this. So let's add a new task. And uh, this is a script, right? Script? Batch script? Um, not a batch script. Not a shell script. Not PowerShell. Command line script using command line exe. No. Bash. That's it, right? Right, team? That's what we wanted. Bash. Some settings need attention. Darn Skippy, it needs attention. Um, display name. And I'm going to call this uh, template. Uh, test, te test template. File path or inline. Yeah, file path. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. It's not here. It's not here. You might run into an issue with script not having the executable flag set coming from Windows. Um, hmm, good point. You recall Clark IO running into that, huh? Um, well, we could add another bit of script here that actually does that first. Poll needs an all of the above option. That's not a bad idea either, and I can rotate through some of those questions. That's not a bad idea. Digital um, auth zero Bobby. If it's executed as bash file, then it'll work fine. Good. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Working directory. Well, the working directory I'm going to want to be still doesn't see it here yet. Right? Because it's it's right at the root of the project. So I do want the working directory to be right up top here. Right? That I want it there. Link? No. Fail on standard error. Yes. Right, because we do that. That goes back to um, the suggestions that we had a little bit ago from uh, Digital Sparky and um, and Code Pagoda. We want it to fail if it's not able to compile. So yes, we do want it to fail on standard error. Um, enabled timeout only. I'm going to disable this for right now because I don't see the script in there yet. Yeah, I know the settings required there, fool. Um, and it, it's called test template.sh. I'm going to save that. Added te uh, test template step. Okay. So let me go back to the builds. Right, if I go here. No, rats. No. Okay. So this one factual actually failed. Why did it fail? Git fetch failed with error code, blah, blah, blah. Why? Oh, because it's already merged. Okay, that's fine. Not concerned. Because the second one actually did work, right? Check out, counting objects, show me the files, show me the files, show me the files. Mm, no, it's actually not here. Hmm. Okay, let's go back into the definition of this build, of this, and see if it will show me that, f that file now, no. Is 
it not showing it to me because it's not in master? Right, we merged that, merged that into the dev branch. There it is, test template sh. Yeah, it was committed. There it is. I think... I think we should try it. Let's enable it. Give this a shot. Uh, agent pool, yep, not master. Master is not where we want to be. Phase pilot. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, hold on. When we did... Um, hang on, let's go back. Let's go back here. Actually, why am I over here? I can do it there. Let's look at the file again. We need to make sure we pass in that artifact directory as our first argument, right? Um, yeah, it was looking in master. I, I, I need that as a sound effect, like the, the that Metallica sounding master of puppets, master. Oh my gosh, it'd be amazing. Uh, where was I? We were doing a thing. Yes, over here. So we need to pass in as an argument the artifact directory that this dropped into, which is here. So let's make sure we copy that over as an argument, right? Otherwise it doesn't get in there. You have He-Man? <gasps> That's so cool. Okay, all right. So let's try this again. Save and queue, not against master, against dev, save and queue. I'd, I'd like to be able to jump right into it, right? Save queue and monitor, boom, and jump me right into this page. Here it is, it's running, so I can see what's going on. You do, Jeff, both the main hardcore one and the fading one before the solo. Ooh. Jay Roseguard, hello, hello. The alternative to an argument would be an env var but it's much of a muchness. Much of a muchness. Digital Sparky, that's a new one on me. Much of a muchness. Hmm. Much of a muchness. All right. Come on. Right, I mean, I, I love being able to do the voice change and, and be able to affect that. Master Brunch. Nah, I don't know. Munch of a butchness sounds like a Buddhism. Yeah, that's okay. Those those folks are pretty cool with their whole the right peace and outreach. Absolutely. Please do the needful. The needful? Alright, here we go. Test template. It's doing a thing. <gasps> it's installing. I'm excited. Tell me it works. Tell me it works. Tell me it works. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it, Azure. You can do it. Installing. 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 No. Uh, today, earlier, Azure AD had issues with adding new users. Um, all right, we got an error. Let's see what the error is. Okay, so generating script formatting command, test template, and it passed in my working folder. That looks right so far. Getting ready. So it did the install, right? So, and so here it is. It added Stream Deck plugin. So we have it added into .NET new. Fantastic. Um running .NET restore in the post create actions. So it's automatically going to town and doing the restore. Fine. Restore completed, restore succeeded, and then specify a project or solution file. Hmm. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Calum, hey, good morning. It works. Ah, almost. Almost. Looks like we have a couple things we need to tune here. Specify a project or solution file. So I think we need to go down into the, we should be going down into that test plugin directory. 
Oh. I need to change into that folder before I run .NET Restore. And it's actually doing the .NET Restore as part of the .NET New. So I don't need this second one here. So let's make a couple quick edits. And I can do that here because um, I'm the administrator. And what I say goes. <laughs> mm. uh, all right, so let's move this up. Oh, it won't do the alt up thing. All right, so if I go into test plugin and I run .NET Restore and then .NET Build, but on a, on a side note, we just verified that if it's not able to build properly, it won't pack the template and publish. And it, it properly fails the build. So looking at, looking at the bright side of this, um, we've, we've acknowledged and we've verified that it fails the build properly when the script doesn't execute properly. Um, fixed order of operations for testing the template. Yep, commit directly to the dev branch. And then actually it should kick off its own build. So we should be able to just jump right back into this and see it build. Here it comes, right there. There's too many pictures of me here. You know what I mean? Best to test the test. Yes. Almost does count in horseshoes and hand grenades. Nowhere else. Rex Havoc is here. People know me. Like Rex Havoc. Make sure you check out Rex Havoc. He's uh, He's got his own channel. What, Rex? You're playing Magic the Gathering over there, and you're hanging out on on um, one of my favorite shows on Sundays. Let me find. I've got the sound for it. I've got, the, I've got a great sounder for it. It's here. Let me find it. Let me find it. That's not in that folder. Where'd it go? Um, <laughs> no. Rats. I don't see it. Is it in this folder? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. He, Rex is also on. Previously on Dungeons and Dragons. No, no, no. Hang on. We need that louder. Dragons and Chicken. Previously on Dungeons and Dragons and Chicken. There you go. Previously. Yeah, on. okay, we heard it already. There we go. Look at that. .NET test, test template. There it is. It's doing the install. Oh, man, we're coming. Oh, thank you, Rex. Uh, lots and lots of magic. Absolutely. magic, And and it's not the Magic the Gathering arena game that you see other folks playing. That, that They're actually playing, right, the, the tabletop card game. The, the real way that, that we play. Installing Stream, stream Deck Lib 02376. That's the version we just built. Fantastic. So it's now built the template with the version that's in this, as part of the build, and it restored and used the .NET standard library as part of this. I think we got it. I think, I think that's a successful build and a test. Yeah. I think we got it there, friends. So now we have verification that the template builds properly. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh yeah, Anarchist Dog. They they have uh, they have overhead cameras for it for the game. It's really really cool. And uh, Nightshade Dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, gotta check them out. Let's uh let me throw a shout out over there for our friend Rex Havoc. So Rex is another Philadelphia-based streamer. Does and uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Tons of tremendous insight into uh, into that game and um, and our friend Kevin Spicy. I just found out last week that's not his real name. He, he, it's just he looks like Kevin Spacey, so they call him Kevin Spicy. Um, he wrote a bot that you can ask in the chat room during their Twitch streams where they're talking about and playing Magic, you can ask it about different cards and it'll tell you all the stats about the card. Really, really cool stuff. Make sure you check out Rex. Uh, let me also throw a quick shout out there for Kevin Spicy. I hope I spelled it right. There we go. Spicy's probably better. Is it with an E or without? I, I always forget this. I think it, I thought it was without any. Got to run. Th thanks so much. And um, of course, this video will be available later today, right there on the YouTube channel. Last thing I wanted to cover: 
so we got this working correctly, right? It's always, we got to celebrate, we got to build working correctly. No E. Ah, that's what I thought. Um, last thing I want to check in, um, Carrie dropped me a quick note that Hugo's pull request is ready for the toolkit. So let's take a look over here to uh, the issues with the project and deployment script. New changes since I last viewed. Um, all right, so let's view those changes. So popping the location. So we're going to create a folder, push the location of that folder, copy into that folder and recurse everything, and then pop, go back to where we were before, and then restart the stream deck. Um, that's great. That's in the sample plugin. We also need this in the template. Um, so can we... Um, Nick... Okay. Thank you, Rambling Geek. I'll I'll take that under advisement. Um, here's what I want to do. Um, I don't want to knock this down. I want to accept it. There's three files changed. Sample plugin, a couple changes in here. And then the PNG file. Um, we need to update the script for the... Oh, fantastic. You, I di didn't realize Hugo was here. I'm, I'm going to just put that comment. Let's make sure we update the template script uh, PS1 as well. Now, we should also check in at some point. Um, so that was an issue with the Windows one. We need, always need to make sure the Bash one is in line as well. So... Um, I just had had a pop-up come up here. I want to... I'm... I, I am in the process of talking to Imperial Girl. She has a um, embroidery machine. She does she does crafts. She plays games um, here on Twitch. I'm in the process of talking to her about maybe getting some help with some custom hats. We'll see about that. But there's there's definitely I, I want to make sure that I I can contribute and collaborate with other Twitch streamers and share some of their work with you. Maybe there's something that they're doing over there that you're interested in and you might like watching. Um, uh, gosh, Robert Tables and I, we tune in and we check out uh, the quilting that Quiltoni does because she always has some neat stuff that she's making over there. Um, and I'm not a quilter, but it's fun watching and learning from some of these other makers here on Twitch. Hey, Matt Auerbach is here. Thanks so much for joining us, Matt. Um, there we go. I need to put something... I need to put something into the uh, into my bot so that whenever somebody from Twitch joins the stream, we have it just welcomes them, does an announcement. So we bounce all over Twitch. Yeah, there's a lot of great non-programming content. There's some there's some cool there's always cool game stuff, right? Um, and it's interesting learning from how folks do games. Um, are the badges a part of the API? Um, that badge that you have over there, that's, uh, that's a staff badge. That, that comes from the, uh, what's it called? You know, the thing. That comes out of the chat room. That's, that's embedded in there. I just echo it out. So, just take a quick refresh and we should see. Yeah, Hugo's going to push this one little update. How would you know who is staff? Yeah, there's a, it's a staff badge that pops up. So, check this out. This is the console for my bot as it's going by. And you see the first badge right there. Staff. So that's how I know somebody's staff. I also know that you have a Twitch, you were at TwitchCon 2018 because that's included with your badges. And this is what's just sent out for everybody that connects in. So, um, there is... Yeah. Pushed. All right, Hugo. So we can, as a bot author who analyzes the TCP connection directly, I get all of that information, and I'm not even including all of it in the output there. Yeah, um, fantastic. So, and you can see here, it's got the little yellow indicator here. It's actually building right now over here on Azure DevOps. And you can see, there it is from Hugo, and it's building. And it'll actually test the script again, the template again. So I love, 
I love getting this information, this quick feedback that yes, everything worked and, and deployed properly or built properly. Now, the script that, that Hugo's updating for us doesn't actually change the, um, the behavior of things. It isn't gonna change these tests. It's more of keeping things running along here. But I keep signing. Um, I don't know. You do keep signing. Why does it say unverified? You have not uploaded your public key yet. You have to upload your GPG key to your profile. Testing in CI CD, absolutely. So there's another great way for folks that are interested in contributing, if you wanna help out, if you wanna learn a little bit more about how to interact with the Stream Deck building a plugin. Um, we're always looking for unit tests. We're always looking for a little bit of documentation. So take a look, take a look at, at what we're doing there and there might be some interesting things that you may want to contribute with now um caleb's out there and i've got a i'm going to drop a, a few hints at somebody that i'm i want to recruit as a guest um i'd love to recruit one of one of our well-known engineers on the team to do a little bit of code review on how we build and interact with the sockets and the resources for the stream deck. I think it might be fun to do a code review with some of those folks who, who literally program and build the, the .NET Core framework on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't want to use any names, but I think that might be fun to, to invite, in, invite, invite um, our shorter colleague to, to join us and talk through and... Um, and do a, a little bit of review for that. Uh, there's, a re there's a reason called CUD, Create User Documentation CRUD. Oh, okay. But a, a little bit of documentation. Always, folks that, that read and see good documentation will appreciate it. And they're always going to be um, talking about, you know, oh gosh, I learned so much. I was able to use because of the documentation. This works. Thank you so much, Hugo. Let's merge all this in. Great stuff. I'm... I'm right here. I said thank you to you. I'm not going to write a final comment there. So let's do this. Let's refresh the scoreboard over there. There we go. Refresh that ticker. And I actually think with that new change that we put in there, drop an email to remind me, help organize something. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um, and then... It, it, Folks don't, that is a good point, Digital Sparky. There are developers that don't like writing docs, but there comes a point where it's like, oh, you know what? Let me just tell people how to do this. I've told them how many times. It's easier for me to write it down, put it into a readme or somewhere, so it becomes great and, and available for folks to be able to make those changes. Um, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, fantastic. All right. Not a problem. Reminded by a tweet today. Writing docs, avoid the words simply, just, or etc. That's a great point. When you're writing documentation, you're sharing your knowledge. You're, you're giving people a little bit of information. And, and you need to not talk down to them, but you need to talk at their level. And using simply or, or just, or it, you only have to do, hmm, do these steps in order to accomplish simple right when you become a user of someone else's software you realize how bad it is you improve yourself amen glorious leader summoned to work gotta go take care thanks so much for joining us um that's our friend glenn condren from the .NET team asp.net team very cool thank you all right i think we're about done today i want to make sure let me let me, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, I want to make sure, I, I want to, oh boy. There's a couple folks here that were suggested that we could raid coming out of this. Um, Nick Larson is out there and our Dallas is out there right now. I want to make sure, let, let me put a shout out out here for our friend Auth Zero Bobby, who's done a number of great contributions for us today um, to really help grow where this is. There you go. Off Zero Bobby is going to actually be streaming a little bit today, later today at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, um, working on Azure Pipelines. Um, make sure, 
make sure you click through there on that link in the chat room. Drop them a follow. Um, you might see a bunch of the same folks that you have you see over here, and it might be um, might be able to have more of the same fun. Adam thirteen five thirty one creating a game doing loads of DevOps. I do know I I know of Adam. Um, the Visual Studio channel does share uh, and rehost his channel. Codebender eight two eight. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate I appreciate you joining us, and you're catching me right as I'm about to sign off here. I think before I go, I want to make sure that we push a new version of the of the Stream Deck toolkit out to out to everybody um, on NuGet. So what I'm going to do is create one final pull request here as we sign off. Um, I'm going to go from Dev into Master. When I push things into Master, um, Azure DevOps will actually publish that all the way out to uh, to the NuGet repository. Oh, are you kidding? I don't like seeing that. There's a ton in here. Um, let's call this release on Feb 1. Create that pull request. Let's see if it if, if this is going to be a quick one that we can just bounce through and change. No! All right. I'll have to do this offline and do the merge, and we'll get that promoted, and it will be available. Um, Hugo is encouraging Carrie to start streaming. You know what? Um, I know Carrie has the gear. We used to do... Um, we both used to work for Telerik. Telerik is now Progress Software. And long, long time ago... Long, long... Hang on. Hang on, let's sing that. Let's, hang on. Switch over. Long, long time ago. Um, we used to do what we called webinar a week, where we would each do a webinar about our product. And, and Carrie would do, um, would, would do a webinar on, I think you had Windows Forms controls for a while, and you had... I forget what the other product was. And it was great. We had a, a lot of fun with that. Hey, I love code. Um, so let's do this. Um, I have neither the courage, gear, or time and location. You know what? It, it does take a little bit to, to get up and running on this. So I'm going to merge and I'll release this a little bit later today. Let's roll over to our Mario. Mario. Sign off here. So we did a lot today. We saw a bunch of different pull requests from folks that we've gone through, we've merged, and and we've improved a little bit of the interaction of our Stream Deck template and toolkit. We um we put together a little integration test, just a little bash script that will start up, grab our template, and try and build with that template so that folks can have assurance that when they say .NET new Stream Deck template, they get they get a, a project that will properly build. And that's, that's kind of important. We want folks to fall into that pit of success. Um, uh, yes, thank you everyone for contributing. That is huge when you contribute and you help us out here. And we recognize and support those folks. And you see them up there on, on our ticker. Yeah, the pit of success. That's an easy thing to do. Make sure you check out some of our other friends that are going to be streaming a little bit later today. Off Zero Bobby is going to be a little bit later. Um, Nick Larson is streaming right now. I think we should do a raid over to our friend Steve Smith. And he is our Dallas on Twitch. So let's, I'm going to sneak into his chat room. And let's see if we can look, say incoming raid. He's setting up some Azure pipelines. Let him know real quick that we're coming. If you're interested in joining, if you want to go check out Steve's stream, sit right back. You don't have to do anything. It's going to magically whisk you through the power of the internet and Twitch over to Steve's stream. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. I'm, um, I'm going to sign off. This video will be archived and available on the YouTube channel a little bit later today, youtube.com slash C Sharp Fritz. Um, if you're interested in helping out with the projects, it's out there at github.com slash Fritz and Friends. There's more links in the wall at the end. Oh, sorry. So sorry about that, Johan. You missed me. Um, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Say hi to Steve for me, and we'll see you on Sunday.
Take care.